Financial support for the production of Issues in Education is provided by the Florida State University License Plate. Your FSU license plate supports scholarships for students who enrich and contribute to our communities. Special programs, gift certificates, and rebates for first-time buyers online at fsu.edu slash mytag. Coming up today on Issues in Education, we talk with Dr. Garnet Stokes, the new provost of the Florida State University. Welcome to Issues in Education. I'm Suzanne Smith, alongside my co-host, the Florida State University President, Dr. Eric Barron. When the class of 2015 began their freshman year this fall, another person began her own first year at the Florida State University. Dr. Garnet Stokes is the new provost and the executive vice president for academic affairs at FSU. She was most recently the dean at the University of Georgia's Franklin College of Arts and Sciences. Thank you very much for joining us today. Glad to be here. So Garnet, everybody hears your name and they instantly think you were destined to be a, a Seminole. Where did your name come from? Uh, <laughs> I've heard this. Uh, it's an old family name. My mother's name was Garnet. Uh, her mother's name was Garnet. And I don't know where it came from before that. Hmm. Well, just so you know, uh, my personal opinion is you would never select a provost by their name. And so I always thought it was a little bit of a negative to think that it was Garnet or else I was going to have to change my name to Gold just to have things work out well. But <laughs> That would be, yeah. be an interesting Board of Governors meeting, meeting and Board of Trustees, would. Yep. trustees it meeting. It would. <laughs> we're, part of today is we're getting to know who you are. And mm -hmm. your dad was in the military, so you travel a lot. Where did you grow up exactly? Well, uh, I was born in Washington, D.C., but my father was immediately sent to Korea, so we lived in Georgia, which is where my father's from, uh, for a year, then moved to Panama City, Florida, where I, my dad was at Tyndall Air Force Base, and I was in Florida longer than any other place except Georgia. Um, we lived in Alaska, Arizona, Indiana. I went to college in Tennessee, um, and uh, then ha was in Georgia for many years before moving to Tallahassee. Tell us a little bit about your educational background. I, um, I if, you know, actually, I didn't originally plan to go to college. Um, uh, my parents hadn't gone, and um, but I was doing well in school, and I ended up deciding that maybe I would take some classes. So I went to a local branch of Indiana University, and I thought, well, this is this is good. I like this. I was taking economics and psychology and. Um, and so I decided to go to college and told my father I'd like to go away to school. He gave me a list of Baptist schools to choose from. I went to Carson Newman College in, uh, in East Tennessee, uh, majored in psychology and uh, minored in religion and political science. And then I went um, uh, toward my senior year, started thinking, what am I going to do with a psychology degree? Um, decided that a blend with business was a good strategy, so I applied to the University of Georgia where I uh, earned a master's and doctorate in industrial and organizational psychology. Explain what that involves, because uh, you know people hear about psychology, but they don't know about necessarily all the different divisions and industrial and organizational psychology. I, I don't have any it's an idea odd what that name, is. Isn't it? Industrial and organizational is uh, sort of it reflects the blend of two different subdisciplines that merged um, a few decades ago. But it really is the study of issues related to people in the workplace. So. Um, it runs the range of old time and motion job analysis type studies to uh, understanding work design, understanding people's job satisfaction and things of that sort. Um, my specialty was more focused on selection and individual differences and the prediction of performance in workplace environments. So are you constantly looking at someone and saying, is that person well suited for that job? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, um, although uh, my interest is in career choices and mm -hmm. the match of people to their environments, um, but I'm probably more likely to talk to someone about how they feel about their particular match to mm -hmm. whatever the job demands, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to trying to plug in one of those prediction equations and, and decide uh, yeah. <laughs> whether they fit or not. Well, how did you decide you wanted to go into university administration? Because that's 
another jump? Um, you know, I once I joined the faculty, um, and I was I was uh, initially very very involved with uh, undergraduate instruction, with working with graduate students. Um, but I found that I was gravitating toward leadership roles and the psychology department at UGA was a large one with six graduate programs so um, the first one I gravitated to was uh, I wanted to uh, lead the graduate program and become a program chair so I did that while I was an associate professor and I just found that I wanted greater responsibilities um, and leadership provides opportunities to influence the future, make people's lives better. Maybe that's my industrial organizational psychology mm -hmm. background. Um, but I saw many opportunities to, um, uh, to promote initially the discipline of psychology within, um, within the university setting. Um, but I had an opportunity to go to the Bryn Mawr program for higher education administration. Uh, the provost at, the, the pro, then provost at uh, University of Georgia uh, was trying to provide those kinds of opportunities for uh, women leaders um, at UGA. And it was in that context, uh, in that four week program, where I really began to think about where was my career headed. I was a department head at the time, um, and I knew that I was interested in higher education. I had become uh, really interested in the issues that were affecting students and faculty, and, uh, but it was just a matter of what direction would I go. Um, but I knew that I wanted to be in higher education administration. And did you see yourself as leaving your research behind applying it in a new way or did you manage to keep doing some of your research? I managed to keep doing some of my research for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, continue to have an interest in it but I'm not doing hands-on research any longer. My research program really involved working with a lot of graduate students and one thing I, f I feel like I gave up to really devote myself to administration uh, was that mentoring of large groups of graduate students. So, you know, that led me to rethink the direction of my, uh, my research program. The position of provost at FSU is the second highest ranking office here at, at the university, but ex yeah. explain to us exactly what those responsibilities are and how much interaction do you have with students? Yeah, it, it's interesting that um, I've had some interaction with students in a number of venues. Um, it's not usually a formal setting. It's much more likely to be informal. Um, the, the role of provost uh, is really in part defined by the, how the president defines his or her role. Um, many times the role of provost is really to run the campus and really just you know second in charge stand in for the president whenever the president is unavailable um, but also really manage the academic program so um, I provide oversight and work with the deans of all the colleges um, I'm also uh, uh, overseeing aspects of information technology and admissions and uh, so, you know, it's really a, a broad portfolio. So compare the types of things you did as a, a dean of a very large uh, college. Yes. I, don't, I don't remember how many uh, units you had. Compare that role in which you're reporting to a provost and now sitting in the provost. Well, uh, you know, it's been a little less than uh, four and a half months or so. Um, as a dean, I was uh, really working with a large number of departments and those departments many of them were large I mean it was a very large College of Arts and Sciences and um, one way in which there's not as much difference as one might expect in the provost role versus the dean's role is that I was overseeing programs in the arts um, the College of Arts and Sciences included all of the arts programs uh, it included all the social sciences um, so when I came in as provost at Florida State, um, I was still overseeing those programs and they were uh, set up in different colleges. Um, the, 
it's beyond those academic, uh, beyond the colleges where the job has really become very different. Mm -hmm. um, having responsibility for uh, uh, more student decisions um, related to admissions, um, the, the issues of information technology and infrastructure, the focus on facilities um, in many cases is much broader. Um, so in some ways they're similar, but I'm working with deans instead of department heads much of the time. Um, and yet those issues um, remain much the same mm -hmm. uh, in many regards. The selection process for your position took about six months and, and interviews aren't just about whether FSU wants you, yeah. it's, it was also about whether you wanted FSU. What made yeah. you decide you wanted to come here? Oh, there were a number of factors. I, um, for one, I knew about some significant strengths at, at Florida State University and um, thought that it was a great university uh, to be a part of. So uh, its reputation was a reason why I was very interested. I was also interested in, um, in, in working with uh, President Barron. Uh, he was uh, a new president with a vision for Florida State's future that I, I was intrigued by that and felt like um, it was a place where I could make a difference and, uh, and work with a president that I would really enjoy working with. And did we let you ease into it? No, <laughs> no, not one bit. Before I even got here, um, uh, I was uh, put on a, a statewide task force by the Board of Governors and uh, suddenly I was having to understand uh, a system of universities that I really didn't know very much about. So uh, that, I had to hit the ground running. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I can, I was sitting there saying I listened to the Board of Governors make the appointment, the chair of the Board of Governors make yeah. the appointments. My ears perked up and I thought, Okay, she hasn't even landed on <laughs> campus yet. <laughs> She's already on a task force. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to FSU. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to Florida. Welcome to Florida. <laughs> um, the Florida legislature, legislative session is going to begin January 10th. And um, will you have any role in pushing FSU's priorities with the, the legislators? You know, I think I'm certainly ready to um, help promote the, you know, Florida State's agenda. Um, you know, I've already had a couple of meetings. What I would expect is that I would be available to, um, you know, to talk to anyone who's interested in what, uh, what Florida State is and, and what we'd like to achieve. Um, I, you know, I think I would enjoy that role. You know, and part of what we're doing is is communi communicating our, our strengths and our successes and also making sure people are aware of, of what could happen, what consequence could happen yes. because of, of an act. And one of the things that you've been doing is going college by college to introduce yourself. Yes. And so what are you discovering so far if you were gonna give a message to those legislators? Well, I think uh, I have been going from college to college and have almost finished uh, uh, all those visits, as well as visiting many other parts of campus and, um, and various programs. You know, I think that one thing that is crucial to convey is uh, the quality of the education that we provide. One of the things I have uh, loved about Florida State's campus is uh, the investment in students. And I think making sure that the legislature is aware of the devotion of this university to um, the care of our students mm -hmm. and to their success. Um, uh, letting them know about the quality of the programs that we have and uh, the extent to which we in fact uh, make good decisions um, and do our work efficiently, uh, use our resources wisely and uh, that we're really, our eye is always on uh, making sure that we are providing a great education at a wonderful university for our students. I also think that making sure they understand our research mission is crucial. Uh, the role that we play in 
uh, disseminating knowledge and creating new knowledge, new findings, uh, and also providing students an education that gives them access to that. Um, I think that's a, a crucial message. Um, Florida State has some tremendous strengths that uh, the state can be proud of. And I think conveying that to the legislature is important. By the time the show airs, you'll have been here almost six months. What do you think yeah. of FSU now that you're completely immersed in it, although it sounds like we immersed her from day one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, I, I uh, haven't changed my opinion. Um, if anything, uh, I, I mean, I initially came in believing that this was a great university. Um, my view is that it is a great university, that, um, uh, you know, I've certainly learned about more programs that I didn't know about when I was at my previous position. Um, but I think that I am continually amazed by um, the programs we have in place to serve our students, um, the efforts that um, we, the, the ways in which we've invested in faculty and staff. Um, this is a place with um, exceptional leadership and an investment in, um, in higher education. So I see this university as being a leader nationally in higher education. Um, so you know, that's, that's the way I see Florida State University. So now. did you come in the door with a set of goals and have they changed? And you know, here we come into 2012, are mm -hmm. you sitting there mapping your own sort of personal strategy of where you'd like things to go? Well, I walked in uh, you know, thinking that before I set any particular goals, I wanted to be sure I understood the campus that I was joining. I think when you come in as someone uh, on the, from the outside, it becomes critical to really understand the campus, where it's been, and get a sense for where people are headed. Um, but I will say that uh, you know my thoughts about um, where where we can go are you know really beginning to coalesce. I uh, think it's time for me to maybe uh, get into the weeds a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't know if I want to call it weeds, okay. you know, but you <laughs> yeah. know you know what I mean. I think um, you know I've been looking at everything from sort of the high level. Uh, there's a lot more specific information that I need, but I see that, um, you know, I think that the promotion of support for our faculty, the retention, the attraction of new faculty and the retention of the, those faculty as well as those we have is absolutely critical. So I would like to really focus on strategies for, um, for attracting and retaining faculty. Um, I think continuing to stay on top of our success in uh, supporting students and graduating them is crucial. I'm really excited about um, uh, about the uh, the big ideas, um, uh, doing what I can to promote the entrepreneurial university. Mm -hmm. um, so I see those as some things that uh, I want to focus on in 2012. I have just one last quick question for you. What do you do for fun with all this other stuff going on? What do you do for fun? Oh, I haven't, I, w I was sort of to say I hadn't found anything fun to do yet, but that's not really true. Sounds more like I, having a time. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I do at work is fun. That is my fun. Um, you know, but I like to, I like to read. I do hope to eventually explore uh, the environment around Tallahassee. You know, I enjoy biking. I'm hoping to uh, get a bicycle here soon and, uh, and take some bike rides in the area, so. Thank you very much for joining us. We've been talking with the new provost of the Florida State University, Dr. Garnet Stokes. When we come back, Dr. Barron and I will talk one-on-one -on -one about more issues in education.
Welcome back to Issues in Education. I'm Suzanne Smith talking with Dr. Eric Barron, the president of the Florida State University. Dr. Barron, we've been talking with um, Dr. Stokes, who's the new provost. What were you looking for in a provost when the whole process came about? Okay, so the most important element is that the provost is in charge of the academic programs. And this is an institution that has very strong academic programs and aspires to have even greater strength in its academic programs. So above all, you want someone who walks in that door and is thinking about quality and thinking about what it takes to advance faculty and to make them successful and by doing so advance the, the success of students. What did you feel that Dr. Stokes brought to the table regarding well, that? Well, first of all, being the dean of a very large college with so many different programs, extending from the arts to the sciences to the social sciences, that's already kind of like a mini university. And so she has that experience and reputation with the success of those departments and, and programs. And it's already a large entity, so she's already one step, one step closer to a provost. What direction do you hope she'll be able to help you take the universe, university? Well, um, looking in each and every direction, how can I make that better? How can I make that better? How can I make it stronger? That's, that's what you want the individual to, to focus on. She's just one of several new hires at FSU, plus there's also some searches for some others right now. Tell us about the different positions that are currently that have been recently hired and, and ones that you're, you're looking for because the list is quite long. Well, it, it is quite long and it, it's fairly normal for a new president to come in and you start to see the, the leadership team uh, begin to change. Although I've been very happy with the strength of the leadership team, um, many of them are senior and they've, they've uh, uh, been in their positions for a while and they're getting ready to retire and, and think about what's next. So the provost, of course, was a, a major position with uh, um, the previous person having been in the job 16 years and then and looking towards retirement, really, from, from the very beginning. Uh, VP for University Advancement, uh, Tom Jennings. It's a position we didn't have, but we have uh, an objective to raise a substantial amount of money, and we need a true professional that's sitting in that job and can also promote FSU as one FSU. We've had boosters and alumni and foundation and they've kind of gone off in their different directions. And by working together, I think we can make all three quite a bit stronger. Uh, our general counsel has, um, has decided to retire. And so that's always an important position for the uh, university. Right now we're doing that with an interim with, with Carolyn Egan who's stepping into that position. Um, Vice President for University Advancement does all the communications elements, is a public face to the university. So Liz Mariansky has took that job on as interim and then uh, uh, finally as uh, full-time doing, doing a great job. And then uh, coming next is going to be the VP for Research. Uh, Kirby Kemper, who has held that position for a while, done an absolutely wonderful job, wants to do just a little bit more physics before uh, the end of his career, and so we're now actively searching for a VP for research. And you also recently hired someone for the Veterans Center. The, the and the Veterans Center is off to a wonderful start, and uh, so Billy Francis, who's a colonel in the Air Force and has run our ROTC program, will step in there to be the first director of the Veterans Center and we have a student advisor that is assisting him. We'll look for uh, someone who's a kind of assistant for him and then he'll be off and running. When you f first started here, one of the priorities um, was, and you'd mentioned this, raising a whole lot of money, one billion, yeah. billion dollars with a, with a B. As we begin 2012 and as the, the, the end of your second year comes, comes about and you're about to start your third, how is that campaign going? Yeah, so basically a campaign is about a seven or eight year period. If we take eight years, Florida State has to move into the ballpark of raising 125 million every year outside of the university. When I walked in the door, we were hoping to get 60. And uh, so a, a doubling when you're in an economic climate that's not great sounds, sounds a little bit tough. But we raised our goal to 90, and we beat that goal. 
And the interesting thing is that prior to that, we counted state match because that is uh, a contribution based on philanthropy and it's dollars that come in and it's not part of the educational budget. So about 15% of the dollars we're raising are state match. We don't get the state match anymore. So that 93, if you imagine having the 15% state mar match, mm -hmm. that really is a big jump from, uh, from a prior year. This year we've set our goal above 100 and I think we'll beat that even without the state match. And so we're ramping up to that 125 and uh, in the later years of the campaign we have to exceed it obviously to make up for the ramp up time period, but there's some very positive signs. The number of people uh, giving independent gifts went up 25% just as an example. Uh, the number of people in annual giving went up 20%. So these are really uh, really good signs. Those, those are good numbers. Um, the 2012 legislative session is going to be beginning in January as well. Um, Rick Scott has talked about increasing money for education. Is universities included in that in that talk? So basically the major focus for increase is uh, K through 12, but he holds the budgets of the universities harmless in the state university system. If that were to hold, it would be the first time in five years that we have not lost uh, ground. And so that's actually a pretty big step. Then with some tuition increase, we can actually uh, begin to recover a little bit and think about being innovative for a change instead of sitting there thinking about what do we lose now. The, um, there is a website that's being used to help communicate the messages of the university to the to the, the the alumni and to others. Tell people what that is. Okay, so this is a web page to advocate for FSU. And when I came on board, and there was an issue before the legislature. It happened to be about uh, flagship legislation, and I wanted to communicate with our alumni and tell them what was going on and get their support because we've got a huge number in this state. People said, well, we really can't. We don't have a way to do that that's easy. We could send out something to our alumni uh, uh, database, but we can't pick people by zip code or by legislate. We can't do any of these things. And we actually need people to volunteer to be associated with that web page so they get the information and then will help us. So all they need to go to is advocate for Florida State. And sign up and we inform them of any issues Wonderful. and they can take off from there. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Er, Dr. Barron. That's our time for now. Please join us again next month for more Issues in Education. You can watch the premiere episode of Issues in Education the first Wednesday of every month at 7.30 p.m. That means you can see the next new episode on Wednesday, February 1st on WFSU TV. Join us as we discuss the latest developments in higher education happening around the state and across the country. If you have questions that you would like us to address on this program, you can email us at issues at WFSU.org. Again, that's issues at WFSU.org. If you would like to see past episodes of Issues in Education, head to the President's website at president.fsu.edu. I'm Suzanne Smith with the Florida State University President, Dr. Eric Barron, for Issues in Education. Thanks for joining us. Financial support for the production of Issues in Education is provided by the Florida State University License Plate. Your FSU license plate supports scholarships for students who enrich and contribute to our communities. Special programs, gift certificates, and rebates for first-time buyers online at fsu.edu slash mytag.